Here is a commercial horticulture update from University of Missouri Extension. I'm Tim Baker, horticulture specialist with today's program. Today I'd like to discuss bacterial canker of tomato. Bacterial canker is a serious disease of tomatoes with potential to inflict severe economic losses on your crop. Symptoms typically are seen on the margins of the leaves first. From there, they expand, eventually turning the entire leaf brown. Symptoms may eventually be seen on the fruit as well. The bacterium can even enter the plant's vascular system, killing the entire plant. Bacterial canker is spread by several methods. If a field or greenhouse has not had bacterial canker before, the most likely method of entry is through seed transmission. The seed sent to the grower comes from a plant which had bacterial canker, which was systemic in the plant, including the seed. When the seed arrives at the greenhouse, the embryo plant inside the seed is already infected with the disease. As the seed germinates and grows, the bacterium grows right along with it. Under greenhouse conditions, the disease is easily spread to other transplants. If infected transplants are taken to a field, raindrops, wind, and splashing can carry the disease to the entire field very quickly. This field of tomatoes use transplants infected with bacterial canker. Temperatures and rainfall spread the disease quickly throughout the entire first planting. The grower lost the first planting very quickly. Although this is late in the season and weeds have taken over after the grower abandoned the field, you can see the extent of the damage. The grower had planted additional plantings which also became infected. However, temperatures were warmer and rainfall not as great and the spread of the disease was limited. Bacterial canker can also cause high economic losses in a greenhouse or high tunnel. While raindrop splashing and wind are usually not a problem, the disease can be moved around in the house on clothing and equipment. The owner of this high tunnel began to notice dying plants in part of his house. It began to spread to the rest of the house. And while unlike field tomatoes, it didn't take over the entire house, it did inflict severe economic losses on his crop. Without raindrop splashing and wind-driven water, losses were limited to certain parts of the high tunnel. It's fall now, and even though the main growing season is over, the grower is still getting some production from the uninfected plants, but it's still very obvious where the earlier bacterial canker-infected plants were as you look across the high tunnel. So how should a grower plan to fight this disease, since there is a strong likelihood that it will surface again next year? First, realize that bacterial disease can overwinter on plant debris. That means that growers should remove as much of the plant as possible, including the roots. The bacterium that causes this disease has been known to remain in infected debris for up to five years. Since bacterial canker can be spread by seeds, growers should take care to remove any volunteer plants the next year. Tomato stakes may also harbor the disease. This means that growers will need to sterilize their tomato stakes before using them again. To do that, submerge the stakes in a sterilizing solution containing household bleach. An easy formula would be 5 gallons of 5.25% sodium hypochlorite per 100 gallons of water. Add a surfactant to help penetration into the wood. Other solanaceous plants can also harbor the disease. This includes solanaceous weeds such as horse nettle. One experiment found bacterial canker on the roots of weeds growing in fields without tomatoes for up to two years. If you are using a greenhouse or high tunnel, sterilize all surfaces to reduce the disease. This includes benches and tools. Growers will need to consider rotation. For fields, this shouldn't be a problem. Find a non-solanaceous crop to plant. Solanaceous crops include tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and potatoes. You should not return to the field with a solanaceous crop for at least three years. For growers under plastic, this presents a problem. Ideally, you should rotate to a non-solanaceous crop, but I realize that tomatoes are the most valuable crop you can grow in your greenhouse or high tunnel. Greenhouses do have the advantage of not allowing rain to contact the plants. This prevents splashing, a major method that bacterial diseases are spread, so this is in your favor. If you insist on growing tomatoes in your greenhouse again next year, after having seen bacterial canker in it this year, you may luck out and not have a serious problem with it next year. Diseases are dependent on the right environmental conditions to grow, and if those are not present, you may get by. This is especially true if you've taken the proper control measures. But crop rotation is best. You stand a good chance that the disease will return again, and you may have a serious problem that will continue for years. I hope this horticulture update has been of value to you. If you need assistance, please don't hesitate to call me. I'm Tim Baker, horticulture specialist for University of Missouri Extension. Bringing research-based knowledge to the people who need it. We're University of Missouri Extension.